I believe Doug McGowan is ready now. Let's take a listen on this update. How's everybody sound? Three, two, one, one, two, three. Looking for a thumbs up from everybody on your sound, whether it's going to work. I see that. Okay, I'm waiting for who are we over here. You good with your sound? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I was just waiting for y'all. Okay. Everybody else good? Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Doug McGowan, the president of Memphis Light, Gas, and Water. Okay, that. Uh, we're here today at our community advisory council at the Memphis Light, Gas, and Water headquarters. We're kind of doing double duty here. We have our community advisory council a regularly scheduled meeting, but we also, since we have power outage, wanted to do a press update, so we're doing two for one here. Um, so I just wanted to start by saying uh, that, if you could go to the next slide, uh, Lillian, um, this is, no, the next, I'm sorry, just go back. I think that's, the, that's not the right slide. Um, so far, we have restored power to 110,000 customers. We have about 31,000 customers left to go. Uh, so that's pretty significant work in just over 24 hour period of time that we've been doing that. But we're not going to stop until we have every customer restored. Um, again, I'm sorry, that's not the right slide, guys. So just take the slides down. Um, the remaining outages are in six clusters around the service area. They're generally located uh, in the Fraser area, the Raleigh area, the Burklair area. East Memphis, Germantown, and Hickory Hill. So unlike the last storm where we had significant outages across the entire county, the remaining outages that we have are really clustered in those focused areas. What that means is we'll have a lot of crews, both contract and internal crews, working very in tight quarters, which uh, ups the complexity of the work that they will be doing. So uh, if you're looking for crews, they will generally be in those areas. Our priority uh, is to work on the circuits that are still remaining out. Uh, for those that have heard me talk about this before, circuits are the largest part of our distribution system. They generally carry between 1,000 and 1,500 customers. Right now we have six full circuits that are still out. And what that, if, if you want to put that in physical terms, if you've driven down Winchester Road and you saw all the poles down, if you've driven down White Station, uh, or Mendenhall, and you've seen all of those poles down. Those are the circuits uh, that are affecting thousands of customers. So we're focused on doing that because that will bring the most customers back on the most quickly. There are also about 30 plus partial circuits, meaning the entire circuit is not out, but a portion of it we've been able to isolate. Again, that's in the 500 to 700 customers, so we'll be working on those. So with those two efforts in those six focused areas, that will get the most customers on the most quickly. To do that, we have about 105 crews that are repair crews. We've upped our numbers even since this morning who are out there actively working. They are supported by 89 tree trimming crews who are clearing the vegetation away so that our crews can make repairs. Any of those trees that you see on lines are being taken down by those tree crews. And they are supported by literally hundreds of other logistics specialists, troubleshooters, um, you know, administrative personnel and importantly, safety personnel who are monitoring this as well as our system operations personnel. Uh, now we will be at this for the next few days. Uh, our estimate for substantial restoration for everybody is by this Sunday. Um, that is too long for many people. Uh, but I'm just being realistic that there may still be some customers affected as far as Sunday because of the extent of the, the damage to the main circuits and the number of individual customers that were affected. Um, in the last storm, we had several hundred individual customers who lost their service. Uh, earlier this, I guess it was yesterday, we had nearly 800 individual customers who had lost their service. That's a lot of individual work that means a crew has to go to that particular home and restore their service. Now we're hopeful that when we restore the circuits that their power comes back on, but that number's pretty high. and So we know there's gonna be more work to do at the individual level and at the transformer level. So that is the next phase of the work that we'll get into when we get these circuits restored. And so I want everybody to know that we will keep working. Um, we have restored a significant number of customers in a very 
fast time compared to even the last outage, uh, but we're not going to stop until everybody's power is back on. The last message I have, and I've said this before, is please don't lose hope. Um, this has been an unusual series of outages that we've had. Uh, the frequency of them is unusual from our history, um, and I'm sure we'll have some questions about that. But we have a plan for making our system better. We have the funding to put into place to make the system better. And we have proven in the past in small areas where we have made these changes that reliability will actually get better. And so with that, I will stop and take any questions that people have. So yes, go ahead. I know you allotted uh, $6.2 million in emergency repair budget since we have seen so many uh, storms that require emergency repairs. Do you have any idea how much of that budget are you so far? Into the $6.2 million budget? That's our projection for the entire duration all the way through Sunday night. So what we do is we take a look at the number of contract crews that come in, uh, the rate that we're going to have to pay them both regular time and overtime, the number of tree crews that we bring in. So we're probably a third of the way through that. Uh, today, but that's our projection uh, for the total probable cost. It may come in slightly less, slightly more than that. All right, you were listening to a press conference from MLGW President and CEO Doug McGowan. He's giving an update on restoration efforts for the thousands still without power. Uh, at last check, there were a little more than 30,000 uh, homes and businesses still without power. He says that they have uh, so far restored power to 110 customers so far. He says that the majority of those are in clusters, of course, in the uh, East Memphis, Raleigh, Fraser, Berkeley, uh, Hickory Hill areas. He says that for the uh, that I saw some trees cleared from lines over there and some repairs that were made. Uh, we have some images of that that were sent in and we actually have some reports of repairs in that neighborhood. So we know there are repairs being made in that neighborhood. Um, for the individuals, uh, there are individuals, and I understand this, that are not necessarily impacted by a power outage but these storms have actually dropped a tree on their car or their house. Um, and I understand how impactful that is. And I don't want to forget those customers as well. Uh, that's not an MLGW responsibility clearly, but we uh, can sympathize with our customers. Uh, it brings me to a good point. If you simply do not know where to turn for resources, if you call 211, uh, they are a wonderful resource uh, that is run by the Memphis Public Library and Information Center, and they can steer you to the resource that you need. If you just don't know where to turn, whether it's, uh, I don't know where to get my food to replace the food that's gone bad, I have a tree on my car, I just don't even know who to call, 201 is a great spot to start because they can direct you to the resources you might need. Um, and you mentioned that you hope to have the power restored for good by Sunday. With another round of storms coming through the area, how may that well, we saw last storm. Uh, unfortunately, it's all too fresh in our memories. July, June 25th, we had a major storm come through. And we had, as you all reported, we were down to just a few hundred customers to restore. And then July 2nd, we had another, actually two rounds of storms come through that bumped us back up to 35,000 out. So that is always a threat uh, of something that could happen. But for today, we're focused on getting everybody back restored as quickly as we can. And how the, I know last week I believe, Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about tree trimming. Um, when I went to the MLGW Board of Commissioners and to City Council, they have approved contracts for MLGW. They are more than $200 million over five years to, first of all, catch us up and keep us on a three-year cutting cycle. Um, those contracts have not been executed yet because I have to wait for one more City Council meeting for them to be final for my authority to execute the contracts. When that happens, those tree trimming crews uh, will get to work in earnest. I do have a current contractor that is doing work um, in selected areas. So, but storm restoration always slows us down because we have to put everybody who's trimming trees to the immediate task at hand, which is not maintenance, but critical restoration and clearing vegetation. But, but it's a very good point, um, just like our crews when they are putting in infrastructure to make it more reliable. When a storm happens, they have to be pulled off of that work to go do storm restoration, so it's very similar. Are there any uh, efforts in the rebuilding in terms of fortification for the future? Do they replace the bulb with stronger bulbs? 
for sure. Well, that, that's a great point, um, and thank you for asking. Uh, when I say don't lose hope, there is a plan, and it is funded. Um, in 2018, uh, Memphis Light, Gas, and Water put forth a plan called the Way Forward that was going to start in 2020. It was a five-year reliability and resilience plan. Um, the two years of COVID really put a, uh, an impact on that because of supply chain and the available personnel to do the work. But that work is still underway. Uh, what that does is several things. First, uh, it's a lot of vegetation management that we just talked about. Second, it's replacing infrastructure that you just talked about. Uh, pole replacements, there are thousands of poles that will be replaced with stronger poles, poles that are of a modern standard. Uh, some of the poles that we have in the system are very old and they were not built to a modern standard. Um, there will be new transformers. <clears throat> there will be fewer people on each transformer. There will be fewer people on each power line, um, which gives you more resilience. Uh, there will be some old infrastructure that's replaced along the way. Um, and then there will be automation of our distribution system that also makes you more resilient and allows us to isolate where damage is. So uh, the work that we are doing will bring our distribution system on par uh, with the best distribution systems in the country. Uh, the work that we have to be committed to is ensuring that every year we continue to invest in preventative maintenance and also infrastructure to make sure that our infrastructure never gets so old that it, be, it becomes fragile and out of uh, and susceptible to outages. So that's the large part of the work. It's everything from poles to transformers to fuses to our substations. Uh, all of that is being reinvested in to make the system more reliable. Is that something that you're doing now? Yes, we are doing it now. Um, I was just in the Orange Mountain neighborhood. That is one focus area we have. I'll give an example. We inspected 3,000 poles in Orange Mound, and we replaced, uh, we identified 425 that based on their condition needed to be upgraded and replaced. We've already done 375 of those. We identified about 135 transformers that needed to be changed. We've replaced 109 of those. So that work is underway um, in selected areas of the city. Um, and the service area. So yes, the work is underway. It's been underway since 2020. It's not just electric though. It's also the water system and the gas system. All of that work is presently underway. Yes, ma'am. Sure, I'll have to get back to you. I'm not sure exactly what the decrease was in 2022, whether it was availability of poles or availability of the crews to actually come and do that. The goal of changing the poles has never changed, though the number of poles that needed to be changed has never changed. Has never um, changed. We're actually, I think, on pace. We're on, we're on pace for pole replacement to meet the original timeline of pole replacement. I think we're actually ahead. So, um, A little ahead, yeah. No, the, the budget is, if you saw a one-year budget where the number was slightly lower, I just want you to be clear that there is sufficient funding in the way forward plan. It's $1.3 billion. And so, in fact, it's the execution of the budget that we have in hand. So uh, we need to do a better job of executing all the money we have. So uh, there is actually money that was unexpended because of some of the supply chain issues, the crew issues. Um, so it does little to have a, a high budget number if you're not going to execute on it. So uh, one of the things, and I'll call your attention uh, to the MLGW website. Yesterday, uh, we launched our performance monthly performance review data uh, portal. So if you go to the MLGW.com website, 
you can actually see the metrics that we're tracking for our budget expenditures for all of the way forward. You can see the number of poles we've replaced. You can see where we're behind and we are behind in some areas, but it's all accessible to you so you can track right along with us our progress. So I hope you'll go there and take a look at MLW.com and actually look at some of our performances, everything from budget to safety to operations to customer service, and just take a look and see what you think. Well, I guess I would say it like this. Uh, uh, I'm going to use a data point um, because folks are asking, well, is it, is it the weather, is it the infrastructure, is it the money? Uh, in the last 18 months, we have had 800,000 customers, discrete customers impacted by that we attribute to major storms. That number is the same as the previous 10 years of major storms. So from 2002 to 2000, excuse me, from 2012 to 2022, we had 800,000 customers impacted by major storms. In the last 18 months, we've had 800,000 customers impacted by major storms. Our infrastructure is only 18 months older at the max um, in that period of time. So it's not just the age of the infrastructure. Certainly that contributes, and that's why we have the Way Forward Plan. That is a contributing factor. Uh, the severity of the weather, the frequency of the weather, and the damage that accumulates is certainly a factor. Uh, to your point, it is incredibly important for us to deploy the capital to replace the infrastructure so that we can make it more resilient, and that's exactly what we are going to do. Yes. Well, that's a really good question. Um, clearly, they uh, did not meet the objectives that were laid out for 1,400 miles of clearing per year. Uh, I can only speak to what I know. Uh, as you know, I arrived in December. I looked at that data and said, that's unacceptable. We have to uh, meet our goal. And so asked the staff to immediately put a plan together to get more contractors here to help us. Um, and so that's exactly what we did. I can't attribute the reasons why. I just know that the data says we didn't meet it. Uh, we need to meet it, so I had to take action, and that's what I was focused on, is getting the resources here to get the trees trimmed now. I can't control what happened for the last 10 years. I certainly will if I get a chance to take a, if, if I get a chance to have a breath, I will look back. Most important to me is taking action today uh, I have to take a good assessment of what the circumstances we're facing today, and I have to address those uh, so that our customers don't have to, I'm not standing here in two or five or ten years saying, well, we didn't meet the metrics uh, because I will be responsible and accountable. I am today for getting the job done. Uh, this is the chart I was talking about. I apologize for not having it up earlier, but if you see where the, the blue is, our customers who've been restored. The red are those clusters of customers where I mentioned, and you can see roughly in the Fraser and up in the Raleigh, the Burr East Memphis, Hickory Hill, and Germantown areas that I mentioned. That's kind of where those large clusters are. It doesn't mean if you're not in one of those, we're not gonna get your power back on. It just means we're gonna have a lot of folks in those areas. Other questions? Okay, uh, we will um, let you know uh, depending on how things go tonight, if it looks like we'll have another presser tomorrow, uh, we'll have a statement tonight that we'll put out to everybody just to tell you what our progress is so far tonight. We'll try to get that out by about 5 o'clock this afternoon so you all have it. Okay? Thank you all very much. I appreciate it.